welcome back to my channel this is Wendy again from Tai Chi Kimono so today I'm going to start on the second part of the Jinbei project which will be the top part now before I really get into uh, showing it all together I do want to quickly mention one of the pattern pieces due to the, the whole entire sewing uh, pattern having no sewing instructions whatsoever um, the pattern piece has a few markings on it that I kind of wanted to explain to you in case you like me can't really read that many kanji so let me uh, show you that so right in front of me i've got the um the pattern piece for the two body panels now due to this sewing pattern having no sewing instructions whatsoever i kind of wanted to explain a few things to you just in case like me you can't read uh kanji very well i'll just i'll select few basically now it has these markings on there as you can see there's also two more in the back that are the same as these two so this is the stopping point for attaching the sleeves so you can see that fold line right there that's the shoulder seam basically so this is where you stop attaching the sleeve right below is the attaching point for the ties as you can see, it's not quite in the middle of the neck opening, but it's, yeah, it's a little bit more about the collar. Right below this is a uh, stopping point for the side seam. So the bottom section of what's about 15, 20 centimeters maybe, will be kind of split. So the side seam won't be <laughs> attached together basically, either end of the side seam will be uh, uh, finished off separately. So I've got my, I've got the bottoms on right now. So this, ooh, this is where my waist is, so it will be a little bit down I guess from what I can see. And then the last one, this right on the neck opening is the the mark for the end of the collar so right where this uh, this edge is that's where you stop attaching the uh, the collar so i don't think any of the other pattern pieces have this kind of uh, this kind of marks my apologies i've got my balcony door open it's not really that warm yet but just to get some cool air in so I've got everything nice and cut out over here and what I'd likely do is start on the the ties as well as the sleeves because these will be finished off separately. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Um, for me the, uh, the markings, some of them were clear, some of them weren't. Um, it may depend on uh, your experience with sewing pads whether you would get them right away or not it's entirely okay if you don't but given this pattern has no sewing structure whatsoever i thought it might be helpful to include them as well so i might get started on sewing the whole and uh, the top piece soon um before that i do uh, want to mention like I, I said in the last video um because this pattern has no sewing instructions what i don't know what i do what i will be doing is considered traditional or correct or accurate in whatever degree um, up on this point I haven't had any Jinbei in my own hands I've seen them on other people but that makes it tricky to know what I should be doing so what I do is my way if you want to do it differently then you do you and I there's just no guarantee to know unless you have I uh, traditionally vintage probably Jinbei in your own hands. So uh, consider this uh, my permission to just do it your way. <laughs> so uh, with that, let's get uh, into sewing.
working on the ties so I've done already these three but I thought I'd show you the fourth so this one I haven't done yet as you can see the uh, the edges are still raw so what I do is I grab a chopstick you can use a knitting needle or crochet hook or whatever I just find because this fabric is a little bit loosely woven that a chopstick works the best grab a clean one this is a clean one <laughs> so what I do first is try to pull the layers apart a little bit and push it inside so I get a start can focus oh, I don't know I just wanna if it does so in that kind of hole ish I just put the chopstick and I put it against uh, my hip so I have a little bit of support and then I try to pull the fabric over the chopstick the first bit is a little bit fiddly, but afterwards it's quite easy. There we go. It sometimes takes a bit depending on the fabric. So what I first do is kind of push out the corners. Now usually you want to clip the corners, so I'll just cut off a, a section of the corner. Don't sew into the seam, but because I've used such a small seam, uh, seam allowance, seam allowance, I don't really tend to do it. So after I've pushed out the corners, I just pull it out, the chopstick out, and there we go. So for this fabric, uh, sometimes I use pins, but um, for now I just finger press the seam uh, more flat. So that's kind of prepped for when I will iron it out, iron it flat. Hopefully it will focus now. Yeah, there we go. So it's not totally uh, finished off, but yeah. So that's uh, all the ties finished, and I can get to ironing. Currently, I'm actually pinning up the side seam. I've done one, I still need to do the other, but I thought I'd show you what I'm doing. So I first folded um, the body piece in half. So here's the center back seam. I just marked it with a pin so that the fold stays in place. Now, I have mentioned the split at the bottom section on either side seam. So I've measured how long the split is and it needs to be. So it's 21 and a half centimeters so that's what I've also uh, pinned here Ooh, don't lead, need to lose my pin so before that I measured uh, how big my armhole needs to be because I've uh, got the sleeves over there I just folded the, the longer side of the wider side in half and then measured how far down it came which is here so this is the entire side seam that needs to be sewn up so I love the uh, what I will be doing now
sweet home and back to sewing. So I've just finished attaching the collar as well as finishing the, uh, the front edges. Now initially I didn't really know if I wanted to sew on the collar by hand entirely or just go it by machine. But because the neck opening was quite wide, I thought I'd go ahead and just do it by machine. Normally I wouldn't do it because the neck curves are really tricky. And hand sewing just gives me way more control over my stitching than uh, with a machine. Now the only thing that I did notice was that either I calculated the length wrong or I accidentally cut the wrong collar length. I, I've basically finished, uh, finished off the edge until here, but as you can see the collar is uh, a centimeter or two short on either side. So I guess measure before you cut, but um, yeah, what I'll do is just finish off that little bit and then uh, call it good. Now. Before I went on and get the collar on, I thought of just cutting the width down, but because it seemed very wide to me, but now that I folded it in, it's not pin or anything. It looks okay ish, I guess. So uh, I guess I'll just roll with it and see what it'll look like when it's done. Also, um, when I ironed the collar itself, I used a tailor's ham for the neck curve. So basically the part right here. This is the center back. So this, uh, this part came in quite handy, so I'm glad I, uh, I bought this one. A little Miss Hammy. So I get to uh, finish off the collar, and I'll see you in a bit. Currently I'm about, yeah, I would say halfway through with uh, sewing down the collar. Now I quickly wanted to uh, show you this before I do the rest is because I tend to do it in two stages rather than one. So this is the side I still have to do. So this is that uh, oh, small bit that I still need to sew down. Which on this side I've already done. It's nice and clean and finished. If it wants to focus, there we go. So it's all nice and uh, cleanly finished now. Now the reason why I do it in two stages rather than one is because starting from the halfway point I'm able to make sure that the tension and the fabric is evenly distributed along the entire collar. If I started from say this edge, me being left handed and all, it may be possible that the fabric is going to switch in that uh, to the right, basically. There's a possibility if I didn't pin it in the well, correct way, I guess. So we're starting from the midsection, so basically the center back seam. I'm kind of avoiding this because the tension is spread out to either direction. So I'm getting uh, getting back to finishing down the collar, and I'll let you uh, guess uh, see when I'm done. I've almost finished attaching the details, just need to do the last one. But in case you're curious how I do it, is um, first off, I do these uh, on the collar ends on both. Here's the other one. And then I simply put it on. I've noticed that if I just attach them on the same uh, height on either side, it doesn't always match up. So what I do, let me put you down, me. I'll, I'll put it on in a sec. So I've got it on now, I just, uh, just remember my regular clothes. So these ones are attached at about the same uh, height, but then I just simply measure where the, the ties will go. Now, uh, as you can see, it's not in entirely the same height but it's close enough for me <laughs> so what I do with this is I just simply put in a pin I don't know if you actually can see yeah there we go so that's our 
I'll be uh, attaching this one. The one thing to remember, one on the outside, two on a collar, and one on the inside because it needs to cross over. And if you put this one on the outside, you basically, um, yeah, you, <laughs> you can't. Uh, just nah. Let me, uh, let me tell you, I've been, I've been that. So, uh, one on the outside, two on the collar, one on the inside. So let me uh, put you down again. I'll uh, attach the other one. So I've got my tie here. I've got my. Uh, little box with pins and as you can see I've got my pin here so what I tend to do is just fold the tie over focus come on okay. so I've got my tie here I just fold the end over this is the only part that is still raw just fold it over and then I'll place it down. So I've got my seam right here, so I'm just, well, it's about a millimeter, I guess, from the actual seam, so that's not right on the seam and therefore produces bulk. So what I'm doing now is facing it towards the collar. So that's quite important, otherwise uh, you'll basically pull this side to the collar and it will be kind of noticeable from the out the outside. So we've got it here, just pulling out that pin that I got and then I just uh, pin it down. Now for uh, sewing, let me see if I can get it focused. Yeah, there we go. So what I do is just basically whip stitching all the way around, and then for this part, it's either just whip stitching or back stitching for extra uh, support so that it doesn't tear. But just generally go all the way around on four sides I don't know if this is the best way I think you easily uh, could do this with machine I just prefer to do it um, by hand because that's what I like that's what I can I can do so uh, let me uh, finish off this one and then I'll uh, show you what it looks like so that literally all took about five minutes for me it's a soda maybe not even <laughs> So as you can see, it's all nice and finished. It's sturdy as well. So, oh, I do see that I need to cut off a few uh, thread bits. But that's all the ties done. Um, this is how it looks from the outside. So, uh, there we go. You can see it. it the stitching is definitely there, but it doesn't matter to me. Um, I know it's there. It serves a, a purpose, so um, it's all good for me. Now the body part is essentially done, and I think it's time for me to work on the sleeves, which I've been procrastinating for well, pretty much <laughs> ever since I started to work on the body, or the, the body portion of the. Uh, the jimbe. It's not the sleeves themselves, it's the attaching of the lace that I unsure of, but um, I guess it needs to be done now. So uh, let's get uh, working on that. So I've got my jimbe uh, top on this side and then the sleeve on this side. And this is the lace that I'll be inserting. Let's see if it wants to focus. There we go. The middle of the, uh, the lace, it kind of reminded me of the webbing that I saw on Men's Jinbei so I thought it would be nice to add yeah. so I've got the old lace right here and 
as you can see, there's quite a bit of width difference, which is nice because I was wondering if this one, it's all old one, would look a little bit too wide for for me, basically. So I'll be using that one for a different project. So this is the new lace. So what I'll be doing now is first attach it to the sleeve, going all the way around, just attaching it right on the edge, basically. And then the top portion will be attached on the other side. Now, I've been thinking a little bit about how to attach this lace. Um, right at the uh, the underside and I thought the best way I could do it is by a counter hem so basically one side will fold up and then the other side will fold up and then I will be basically putting them like this so that these uh, the edges are enclosed like uh, like I'm holding now so that way there are no raw edges uh, visible so when I've done that I will uh, sew them down on both sides uh, one way and then the other way let me see if I can actually do that so it's like folded I hope my yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it's folded right down in the middle, and I'll be sewing it down here, along here, the edge, and alongside here. Maybe even just a square, just in case, so that it will be all nice and strong. So that way the lace won't unravel on its own, because that's the last thing that I want. So I'm getting to working on that. I hope it will be okay. I've got the lace on, at least one of the at this size. Now, what I've done is basically I folded it in half against the back side, and I've simply whipped constantly over uh, over the edge. And afterwards, I just folded it back. It doesn't really want to stay entirely uh, flat just yet. I need to uh, iron it out. But basically now the edges, uh, they're kind of budding together, the lace and the uh, fabric of the sleeve. As well as the end, I've also, like I said, counter hemmed. So what I've done is basically this with uh, the edges of the lace. And then sewn it down on all sides, as well as uh, the underside on this, uh, on this side. So it's fairly easy actually, it just takes a lot of time because you need to go over pretty much every other um, hole. As you can see, I had... So it took me about an, an hour or so to do uh, the both of them. So just keep in mind that it might take a while. So now... Um, I need to get the body portion and attach it on the other side. So after that I'll uh, let you guys know how it went and I'll uh, put it on. I've got the first sleeve on and it actually went pretty well. I did the same thing like with putting it on, you know, on the sleeve, just grabbing the edges together and then whip stitching all the way along. Now, for ironing, I just inserted my lovely Miss Hammy. Like that, and just went over it. Because I found that um, just finger pressing wasn't helping at all. I don't know if it's entirely flat now, but it's good enough for me at least. But it, it looks quite okay. If I have to say so myself, the only thing um, I still need to do the other one because um, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing uh, on it for now. Um, what I do I have to do is finish off the edges of the the cuffs basically of the uh, 
cotton sleeve. Um, let me show you what's going on. And you can't see my face, but um, so this is the entire sleeve. It I haven't uh, how did I say? I haven't altered the length of the the sleeve, just uh, the width with which. Um, I probably could do even more, but it's fine for now. The length seems long, like um, this is where my elbow is, and I've seen most of Jinbei sleeves just end up here or just above the elbow. So that means it's a good 10 centimeters too long for me. It might be different for you. So I guess I'll uh, ask people on Facebook and Instagram what they think. Because it looks more like a pajama to me right now than it does um, a gym bay. So I'll uh, go and touch the, the other sleeve and show you what it looks like in the end. Okay, so I've just finished the, <laughs> the sleeves. Yes, I got a shower. And I'm kind of wondering about the sleeve length. Like, they look, look really long to me. Um, Let's just say when I uh, researched Jinbei, I noticed all the sleeves went just about the elbow. And this one is far longer. It's not quite uh, somewhere which have like almost wrist uh, length sleeves, but it's not also a Jinbei length sleeve. So I'm kind of unsure of what to do, basically. Uh, I could chop it off. I could just hem it. Um, I may uh, may ask you guys and see what you say, but because I just don't know what to do. They kind of look okay-ish on me. Maybe because I'm tall or whatever, but um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do. So that was quite insightful. I asked you guys over on my Facebook and Instagram what I should do, whether to chop it off uh, the sleeve length or whether I should just hem it and leave it. It was kind of divided between uh, chop it or leave it, but a couple of you did say that I could just leave it on for now and see whether I like it or not and chop it off eventually if I just don't. So I. I think that's the route I'm gonna take that will leave me much more freedom in what I want because I can always chop it off later if I want to. So that's what I've done now. So that's my half tube and that I'm working on. So I've just made a small, well, not so small, full of them. So it's somewhat uh, shorter, about two centimeters or so, but it's not much. So that's pretty much the only thing I have left, and afterwards the the jimpe is finished. concludes my about three weeks sewing journey to make this jinbei. They're all finished. I'm quite happy with them but I will be honest I do need to make alterations to uh, the pattern even more than I already did. Uh, the, the whole width that I added to the, the pair of pants uh, section I can cut that out straight away. Um, I may also need to yeah, alter the length of sleeves as well as take in about this much of the the body panels like the width because it it's way too wide for me it's some uh, something i do deal with uh, with even regular uh, clothing i need the length not the width so that's something i i'm used to but maybe didn't really um expected from this pattern um, 
yeah, it just happened that way and I guess that's the one of the things uh, that I would have noticed if I did a mock-up before uh, diving straight in and learning afterwards. Yeah. Either way, I'm quite happy with how it turned out and the pattern itself, it seemed very straightforward to me. Having uh, sewn my own kimono and knowing how to sew in general, I would highly recommend this pattern, especially because it's a great, how do I say it, like almost an introduction in how to sew your own kimono. It's, it's a vaguely similar, especially the top uh, construction with the, the collar and whatnot. It's obviously not the same, but it does yeah i can i can see how you would lean uh yeah go into it basically uh yeah i wouldn't recommend this as your very first summer project but yeah as long as you have a basic understanding of garment construction in general i'm pretty sure you uh you can see succeed with this particular project so with that, I'm going to enjoy my djembe and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video, whenever that one will be. Bye everyone!